Hello everybody, welcome to the second tutorial in Noble Weapons Quick and Simple Tutorial Series. In this next chapter, we're gonna learn how to animate sprites and script them so they change according to some condition. The first thing we're gonna do is create the animation. Right now we have all the sprites in a sprite sheet, but no way of knowing in which order they're gonna be played. Let's go ahead and create, go to Assets, Create, TK2D, Sprite Animation. Um, let's go ahead and save this in the tutorial folder and go ahead and name this fish animation. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And uh, once I do that, I go ahead and click open editor. And inside the editor, I'm going to go and click create clip. Um, I'm going to name the clip fish swimming. Okay. And inside collection, I need to select fish and inside fish I need to select the first sprite in the animation so once that's selected I double click on it okay that's the first sprite and if you look closely at the timeline you'll see that this is the first frame I can add other frames manually um, I can also delete them or hitting the delete key but if I've numbered my uh, frames correctly, I can also select the first one. Click auto fill from 1 to 9. You can also do that in reverse. Let's go ahead and click 1 to 9. And it'll fill it in with, uh, with the, the, the corresponding frames, right? So I have the, uh, the first frame here, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and so on up till the last one, right? I can also choose if in the wrap mode if I want the the animation to be looping, if I only wanted to um, animate one, so I'd click play and then it would stop. If I loop it, it'll go on forever. And as you can see, the fish is going quite fast right now. We can fix this in frame rate. Let's go ahead and put 10 here, and you'll see uh, what the total animation time is here, right? So that's 0.8 seconds. So if I go ahead and click um, play, uh, you'll see that the, the movement is much more realistic, right? Um, before closing the window, just make sure you click commit and now you can close the window. So let's go ahead and click our static sprite, the fish sprite, and in the inspector click add component. Look for 2D toolkit and inside the sprite category you can look for uh, TK2D sprite animator, that's what we want to add. Let's go ahead and click on that. Um, and inside the animation library, select the fish animation. That's what we created before. Um, and right now we only have one clip, which is the fish swim, uh, swimming. And if you want the animation to play uh, automatically once the game starts running, you tick the box. You can also do that through code, right? So uh, right now, if you remember last tutorial, I created a uh, small script where the uh, fish would move to the left the fish is going to uh, uh, swim but this time it's going to have the animation so the next thing we're going to do is uh, add some more sprites to add custom behavior what I'm going to do is uh, import a, an electrocuting animation for the fish which is going to get electrocuted by a, a sea animal right? Uh, so the first thing we have to do is add the animal and the electrocuting fish sprites to the uh, fish sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and click the fish, open the editor, and look for the um, electrocution sprites. Let's go ahead and import that. So for the animal, because the animal and the fish have to collide, we have to uh, go ahead and um, uh, specify a collider type of box trimmed. Uh, you can delete, uh, you can force none for the uh, abyssal fried sprites because you don't need the fish to collide while, while it's electrocuting. So let's go ahead and force none and apply that. Um, and once we've done that, we can click commit. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and close it. We need to create the animation now, right? Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and go to the fish animation, open the editor create a new clip. Uh, let's call this fried fish and we have to select the fried abyssal autofill from 1 to 9 okay and preview the animation which is a bit quick. Let's go ahead and um, the wrap mode uh, set it to once 
because we don't want it to loop. Let's go ahead and play that. Okay, it's a bit quick, so let's go ahead and just um, set a frame rate of 10. Let's go ahead and play that. Okay, that sounds uh, more sensible. And there's another thing I want to teach you, which is if you want to loop a specific part of the animation, so say for example this is a bit too short, right? It makes a first convulsion and then uh, it disappears, right? And, and, and smoke. Um, maybe I want to repeat this part, right? So uh, the fish convulses twice. What I can do is go ahead and click on the uh, last frame that I want. I'm going to go ahead and insert three frames. And for example, I'm going to set this to uh, frame number two, this one to frame number one, and this one back to frame number two. So you'll see a more natural movement, right? So we're going to go ahead and click commit and close the window. The next thing we need to do is create a sprite for the animal. So let's go ahead and click create 2D toolkit sprite. Okay. Um, and in the uh, fish collection, let's go ahead and uh, sorry, select the animal sprite, which is this one. Double click. I'm just going to go ahead and change the name to animal. Okay. And I'm going to move it a bit to the left so the uh, fish eventually collides with it. Right. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is add a rigid body to both of these sprites, these objects, sorry, um, so they collide properly using the physics system. So let's go ahead and add component, physics, rigid body, um, disable gravity, and uh, set these constraints, right? We don't want them to rotate in the x and y axis, only along the z axis, and uh, we don't want it to move in the z uh, axis as well, right? Because it's a 2D game. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the fish. So add physics, rigid body. Okay, disable gravity, set the constraints. I want to tag the animal. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and add a tag. Tags, uh, there's, I created a tag that's called electric. Let's go ahead and in the, the, uh, tag the animal as electric. Okay, here we go. And what we need to do now is edit the script for the fish. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the script, edit the script. Here we go. And I need to edit the on collision enter function so it collides with the animal and responds accordingly. Right? Um, what should happen is the fish should play another clip. Okay, let's go ahead and access the animator, TK2D Sprite Animator. Okay, let's call it Animator. And in the start function, we access it as a component. So get component TK2D Sprite Animator. Okay, and now we can use it. So animator dot play. And the name of the uh, clip that we created earlier, right? So if we go ahead and play this, so it's swimming and it gets electrocuted. There's a couple of issues here. First, you might have noticed that the fish continues swimming uh, while it gets electrocuted. The second issue is that the, the game object actually doesn't get deleted. The animation finishes, but the last frame is still um, lurking around. Okay, so what we need to do is create. Let's go ahead and create a boolean value of dead. Okay, which is false, and the fish should only move if the fish isn't dead, right? So let's go ahead and script that behavior. Excuse me. There we go. And only if it's not dead, the fish translates, right? Um, we can see this immediately if we say dead equals true once it collides with the animal. And the other issue, we're going to fix it by using what we call the coroutine, right? So we're going to go ahead and create a coroutine. I enumerator disappear after finish. That's what we're going to call it. Okay. And inside of this, we're going to go ahead and while the animator is playing, okay, the, the, the last animation, the one we specified last, 
then yield return no, which means wait for the next frame, right? And it'll check that until the animator has stopped playing. You might remember that uh, we set the animation as non-looping before, only do it once. If you set the animation as looping, this will never be true. So make sure your uh, non-looping animations are marked correctly. Now, once the animator stops playing, what we should do is destroy the game object, right? Let's go ahead and destroy game object, okay? And call it from here. So the way to call coroutines is start coroutine. And I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so you see what I'm talking about. Once the fish collides with the animal, the last frame of the animation won't be seen. Okay? Because the game object disappears as you can check over here. Right? In the hierarchy, the fish no longer exists. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. In the next one we're going to learn how to do some scenario by using dice sprites that come with 2D Toolkit. And I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I'll see you guys next time.